Jonathan Kaminga has a very high ceiling as a versatile and talented two-way wing player. At 6 feet 8 inches with impressive physical tools, he has the potential to develop into an elite two-way wing who can excel on both ends of the floor. But he is a tantalizing, frustrating player in a rather unique situation for someone his age and talent, making it hard to find the right balance between blinding optimism and downtrodden despair. It is rare to see a player and a culture as dissonant as Kaminga and the Warriors. Some of that is simple happenstance. Players like Kaminga, picked 7th in 2021, are almost never drafted onto championship caliber teams, where on most teams he would have been a heavy minute starter from day one, like his maximally extended peers Franz Wagner, Evan Mobley, Cade Cunningham, and Scotty Barnes. He instead had to wait more than two seasons to find a consistent role in the rotation. Golden State's system requires some first-hand knowledge, some game-day experience. The Steph Clay Draymond Warriors were about off-ball screens, optionality quick cuts, and sneaky passes. Kuminga has always predicated his game on straightforward athleticism and direct on-ball scoring. Subtlety is for players without a 40-inch vertical. But Thompson is gone. The Warriors are in flux, and a leap from Kuminga is indisputably the best way for Golden State to remain relevant as Curry ages out of dominance. But is he capable of it? Suns. Kuminga! What's the wrong hand? Let's start with the good. Kuminga has emerged as a Category 5 hurricane at the rack. He averaged nearly 18 points in the paint per 100 possessions, more than players like Franz Wagner, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Julius Randle. He finished an excellent 74% of his attempts at the rim. Despite a ropey frame and quick acceleration and deceleration, he relies surprisingly heavily upon brute force. He dents defenders' chests with his shoulders and then stretches those arms for delicate finger rolls. But that doesn't mean he can't rev the engine. Foles guarded Kaminga with centers fairly often inviting blow bites. If you're not a fan of these newfangled fast break threes the kids keep doing, you'll appreciate that Kaminga has total tunnel vision on the break. Steve Kerr and the Warriors have long tolerated mistakes of aggression. It's hard to fault someone for going too hard on the break. In general, Kaminga's relentlessness is a boom. He is well above average in both transition frequency and efficiency. Peculiarly, Kuminga's strengths are the Warriors' overall weaknesses. As a squad, they rank 24th in points in the paint and second worst in fast break points. Without Kuminga, it's not clear how they generate either. Kuminga might be the only plus positional athlete in the rotation, give or take Gary Payton, but he almost makes up for everyone else. His slams in particular were constant and impressive. The only non-centers who forcibly shoved the ball through the hoop more often were the Thompson Twins, Aaron Gordon, Obi Toppin, and Giannis Antetokounmpo. He can do more than just dunk, of course. Kuminga loves nothing more than backing smaller defenders down before turning for a drop step or a little 8-foot jumpers. Relatedly, nobody this side of Pascal Siakam partakes of the spin move like Kuminga. When it works, it looks really good. Unfortunately, Kuminga turns temporarily blind whenever he even thinks about spinning, exposing him to digging defenders. Combine that with surprisingly weak hands, and you've got a recipe for ugly turnovers. His handle has vastly improved since his rookie year, but that says more about where he started than where he is now. Even when he's not spinning, he loses his dribble in traffic far too often. Kuminga had the league's 19th highest turnover rate on drives, which is doubly concerning when paired with his poor passing vision. Kuminga has a reputation as a slow decision maker, but that's not quite right. Instead, he tends to call his own number too quickly and then stick to the plan no matter what. But that isn't the whole picture. The Warriors sought to meet Kuminga in the middle, and he noticeably improved as the year went on. He notched three assists per game after the All-Star break, roughly half again as many as before, even on a per-minute basis. You could see his floor mapping level up as he started downloading the game state with broadband instead of dial-up. Kuminga will never be Nikola Jokic. But players like Kawhi Leonard have grown into competent playmakers over time. Kuminga can and should get better. Despite an increase in playing time, Kuminga's three-point shot dipped in both quantity and quality in year three. 
So suffice it to say, Kuminga's ceiling as an offensive weapon is capped until he quickens his release and improves from outside. That lack of a long-range jumper initially relegated Kuminga to a lot of corner and dunker spot placements in Golden State's offense. But they gradually grew more creative in their usage of him as the season went on. He started setting more picks for Steph Curry both on and off the ball, even filling Draymond Green's spot in the short roll a few times. Kuminga's screening, in general, is an underrated part of his game. Nobody will mistake Kaminga for Green as a playmaker, but Green can't finish in traffic like this. Kaminga down the lane! <laughs> but for all the Warriors' collective cleverness, there's only so much juice to squeeze out of Kaminga next to Draymond Green and Andrew Wiggins. Steve Kerr made it clear that he won't play Kaminga at the three until he gets better as a playmaker and shooter. Kuminga was at his best as a four next to Green at center, which opened up driving lanes, but the team found a lot of success defensively when Green played power forward next to Tracy Jackson Davis. It's a tricky balance. Kuminga's own defense has been up and down throughout his career. He has some magnificent on-ball highlights, using his length to crowd ball handlers, poke away dribbles and harass jump shooters. But he's inconsistent and occasionally wild off the ball, overhelping or ball watching far too often. Like their offense, the Warriors' defensive scheme is complicated, and Kuminga often looked a half step behind. After all, Kuminga is still young. The age 22 season is a classic inflection point, a fertile field for stardom to bud. The one thing that even the fiercest Kuminga detractors can't deny is that he has upgraded everything except the three pointer. He's far from a finished project, but he certainly isn't stagnant. Assuming the Warriors won't extend him before the October deadline, next year is a contract year for Kaminga, who needs to prove to Golden State that he's worth big bucks. Frankly, waiting until the offseason for restricted free agency might be best for both sides. Kaminga wants big money, but he needs to show progress in both the loud and the quiet things. They learned their lesson from the Jordan Poole debacle, and the Warriors are in no rush to dole out money to potential for potential's sake. Both sides could benefit from more information and larger sample sizes. Golden State is married to the Steph Draymond pairing for now, and while they aren't likely to win a championship anytime soon as currently constructed, they are also still just good enough to make it impossible to reset the team for the future. While they need Kaminga's strengths, they also can't afford his weaknesses. Kuminga doesn't need to be an all-star next season, but he does need to prove he can fit next to Green and Curry. If he can't, it's unclear how much value he has in the league, but a trade might be best for both sides.